This is another message from Five Minutes with Jesus. I want to talk to you about joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8.10, Nehemiah was helping us to understand that joy is, is, is so powerful. It can actually give you muscles. It can bring muscles to your spirit, strength to your spirit, because it doesn't come from your emotions. It comes from your spirit. Spirit. It's, it's, it's a state of mind. It's a state of existence and being. It's not like happiness, which is only based on happening. Amen. Let's look at it a little closer concerning joy. What does our Lord teach us? There are many things that we can glean from the word of God. The word of God is so powerful. It even teaches us about joy. We know that joy, the Bible uh, connects it to hope. And this is why a lot of times you'll find some folks, their, their hope is broke because their joy isn't isn't understood correctly. But let's dive in to this joy. Joy is very, very powerful. You can find it throughout scriptures. It was it was talked about. It was alluded to. It was it was given to us when 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 you can have a challenge in your life. You you have to remember at least I have my salvation. That's what the joy of the Lord is related to. It's to my eternal state, my eternal situation, where I'm going, where I'm headed, not what's happening right now. Let's look further, talking about Jesus' joy. Jesus understood and had a revelation. If you want the joy that Jesus wants his people to have, it must come through revelation. You won't get it from just having a good church service. It's an eternal revelation that happens to your spirit. Look at Luke 10, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit, comma, and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed revelation them unto babes. What? These things concerning joy. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight, my God. There's different motivations and understanding concerning joy. And the believer must have your, your motivation concerning your joy revealed to you. When you do, you will have joy. Hallelujah. Look, Luke 15, 5, in finding the sheep. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulder, talking about the sheep, rejoicing, rejoicing. Hallelujah. Seeing the value in others, going after the lost, reaching unsaved people, reaching the backslider. John 15, 11 gives us more in-depth information information on joy. Watch this. It abides in the believer. John 15, 11. These things have I, Jesus, spoken unto you that my joy, whose joy? Jesus' joy, that my joy might remain in you. Don't lose your joy. It's not like happiness. It's different. It comes from deep down in your spirit. It will strengthen you. That my joy, the joy we get from the Lord, that it would remain in you, John 15, 11, and that your joy might be full because his joy came in and filled up my joy. Oh, my goodness. Watch something else very powerful about joy and how you get it. John 17, 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy in themselves. There it is again. His joy comes through his word. He spoke something. I heard something. I received something in my spirit, and I got joy. Oh, my goodness. Let's look at another example Jesus gave us in Hebrews 12 and 2. It sustained him at the cross. What? The joy 
of even having to go to the cross sustained him. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that sustained him, that was set before him, that means it sustained him, that joy carried him. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Joy is so powerful. It will sustain you. It'll sustain you through a situation. It may not be a great situation, but your joy will remind you that all things work together for the good to them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. And my purpose must be in his purpose. And his purpose is that you keep the main thing, the main thing. And no matter what you're experiencing going through before you get in it, whatever you have come out of that, you know, Romans 8, 29 says that whatever happens, I must be ready to be conformed into the image of Jesus Great joy, great joy will fill up your spirit. Joy has many different occasions that it can, it can spring from. Ezra, Ezra says in 312, but many of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house, talking about restoring the house of God, building the house of God, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, soon as they seen them beginning to build the house of God, they began to weep and to cry with a loud voice, and many of them shouted aloud with joy. Have you ever had tearful joy? Have you ever had joy with tears? Hallelujah. Yes, like when a little baby is born. But what about Job 38.7 concerning having joy and what the angels saw when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Don't let anything stop you from shouting, from getting your joy back. That's why he says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men that Jesus is at hand. That's where I get my joy. Aren't you glad about this joy? Ah, thank you, Lord God, for this joy. I thank you for this joy that you have given us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.